I'm Derek Pitts, Chief Astronomer at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and thank you for this opportunity to participate in the summit. My presentation today briefly examines a topic that is of importance to all of us who work across international and cultural boundaries in our effort to understand the world in which we live. My message is simple, yet compelling and imperative. Science works best when principles of diversity, partnership, and international cooperation become as essential as the funding we all depend on. Across the planet, there are numerous examples of international cooperation in large science projects. Those that most of us are familiar with tackle some of the biggest questions and problems. For example, the International Brain Initiative. Seven countries, including China, Canada, the United States, Australia, Japan, Korea, and Europe, have a role to advance neuroscience across many disciplines. 30 Meter Telescope is a partnership of Canada, China, India, Japan, and the United States. They all work together to build what will become the next largest optical telescope. Once completed, it will be three times the size of the current largest optical telescope in operation, the twin 10-meter Keck telescopes at Mauna Kea in Hawaii. The Long Baseline Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. The United States, United Kingdom, Germany, and Australia work together with other international partners to confirm Einstein's ideas of the structure of the universe. The European Organization for Nuclear Research, or CERN, operates the Large Hadron Collider. 23 member European states have built the Large Hadron Collider, and 18 different countries take part in various experiments identifying what makes up the matter of the universe. All of these are prime examples of international cooperation where diverse teams collaborate to answer compelling questions. But what is it about international collaborations and team diversity that generates successful results beyond individuals working independently? How does diversity bring benefit to science? In his 2014 Scientific American Voices article, Kenneth Gibbs Jr. states that while the current paradigm still promotes the notion of the lone, brilliant individual, when we consider scientific research as a group problem solving, instead of the unveiling of individual brilliance, diversity becomes key to excellence. In fact, National Institutes of Health Director Francis Collins has said chronic and woeful underrepresentation in the workforce leads to the inescapable conclusion that we are missing critical contributors to our talent pool. So what does the future of international cooperation in science look like? International cooperation in science must demonstrate and value diversity as a means of engaging the best talent for problem solving. International education exchange programs and the inevitability of social media's role in shrinking and shaping the world also foster the addition of new voices adding diversity via international team participation. International cooperation in science must have as an imperative finding solutions to the global threats to a sustainable environment and human existence. After all, we are not all escaping to Mars on rockets to set up Earth 2.0. Even the chilliest periods of the Cold War, United States scientists maintained ties with their counterparts in the Soviet Union, and these relationships were of substantial value in promoting the transition to warmer relations. Two recent examples where science collaboration superseded international political tensions are the 30-year collaboration between the Russian space agency Roscosmos and the United States space agency NASA in the construction and operation of International Space Station and collaboration on COVID-19 research between Chinese and world scientists to quickly and accurately sequence the DNA of the virus. Now what are the primary areas of research that will benefit from international cooperation? 
Let's start with space exploration and astronomy. The most difficult challenges in the human exploration of the near solar system will require the diverse experiences, knowledge bases, and combined resources to reach and safely return from planetary exploration. While NASA and other national space agencies have been successful in exploring the near side of the moon or have orbiters collecting data, only the Chinese National Space Agency has successfully landed and operated a rover on the far side of the moon, filling a very important gap in our knowledge base about the moon. Clearly an example of how cooperation could be beneficial to all lunar explorers. If the next stop for human exploration of the solar system is Mars, doesn't it make sense that the collective knowledge and resources of humankind be brought to bear on solving the challenges of human space exploration? As for astronomy, the biggest questions we ask about the universe are pointing us more and more towards understanding the smallest interaction at the quantum level. The Tianyin Fast Radio Telescope and the Large Hadron Collider at CERN represent cutting-edge instruments whose effective use require the diversity of thought, approach, and experience found through international teams and cooperation to justify their enormous expense. Unfortunately, it's now becoming painfully obvious that emergent environmental issues such as climate change, global warming, alternative energy sources, waste management, and food security affect us all via the Earth's interconnected ecosystems. What any one of us does in the environment not only affects us all, but has the potential to produce unintended negative interactions that may exacerbate a previous condition, thus compounding the problem. We must all coordinate and synchronize our efforts to avoid what could become an irreversible ecological disaster. In the realm of biomedical studies, the vision of the International Brain Initiative is to catalyze and advance ethical neuroscience through international collaboration and knowledge sharing. Says Amy Bernard of the International Brain Initiative Inventory Working Group, the hope is that the kind of work and the kind of effort that can be leveraged by a global community is going to be more powerful and more impactful than any of the individual groups on their own. All the better to understand brain function and improve illness treatment protocols. And one I find particularly compelling, eliminating genetic diseases. To unlock the roots of genetic disease, one of the Human Genomes Project's goal is to use the complete human genome sequence to improve our ability to diagnose and treat genetic diseases that affect millions worldwide every day. Imagine being able to eliminate the most debilitating diseases through the ethical and responsible manipulation of DNA at the genetic level. Now this is just a small sample of the kind of science challenges and opportunities that can benefit from international collaboration and cooperation. But as we know, there are challenges to international collaboration and cooperation. So what are some of those challenges? First, we have to say that they must be acknowledged in order to be resolved. Now, according to a study of 1,286 academics by the Royal Society published in 2019, some of the primary barriers to international collaboration are geopolitical tensions, in fact, Chinese collaboration with U.S. authors has been waning since 2017. Not good. But fortunately, in many instances, science has been able to transcend political and ideological differences, allowing the development of collaborative networks that bring enormous talent to work on research. According to Ann Hatch at the San Francisco Declaration Research Assessment, many of the structures and mechanisms that evaluate and reward science are still those of the age of the lone scientists. There are few awards for collective performance of teams and collaborations. Even though there is little formal recognition among science awards for group work, science flourishes best in a climate of mutually respectful international partnership and collaboration. 
funding for science research is more readily available when the work proposed is built around international teams making use of the best talent and the application of the results is more widely distributed through products or processes where the public can make use of the innovations. In conclusion, in our world today, the challenges are more complex and their solutions more elusive. Research team diversity and partnership, international cooperation and collaboration are essential in the continual effort to improve the quality of life for everyone. As I said in my introduction, science works best when principles of diversity, partnership, and international cooperation become as essential as the funding we all depend on. Here's one way we can all work together to advance the work we know is important. Foster and support diversity, international collaboration, and cooperation. Our world depends on it.